What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the HQ. Welcome back to the channel. This is Big Dogs Gotta Eat. Fantasy football. That's the logo. Get familiar with it, baby, because we're coming at you with five videos a week. It is Friday. I am Nicholas. Every Friday we do a 2019 fantasy football mock draft on draft.com. Here's what we're doing today. A 10-seamer. Half PPR. These are best ball drafts. So... If you want to draft with me, I, I open up a lot of these drafts throughout the week. And you can possibly get into the draft for each Friday's video if you sign up on draft.com. Add my S, which is Nick Ercolano. That's the username. Friend requests me. And uh, and you will be sent out an automatic invite every time I start a draft. I got I got to say, though, I got hella friends online on, on the draft network. I got way more friends on draft than I do in real life. So uh, these drafts fill up very, 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 very quickly. So you got to have your Twitter fingers itchy. 10 team, half PPR. I am first on the clock. Woo, this is an interesting one. Because Saquon Barkley had been my 101 for a long time. And I don't think I've actually done one of these drafts where I'm on the turn yet. And there's a lot of buzz coming out right now about training camp. And it's officially started. So we have a lot to talk about in today's episode. We're going to make our first selection. And listen... Zeke moved up to my 101 in my draft rankings. In the draft guide on BigDogDraftGuide.com, Zeke is officially my 101 in half PPR. Saquon has moved down to the 102. Um, so training camp is, is full go. Players are out there on the field. We're seeing Twitter highlights. We're seeing seven-second long videos that make you happy about the player that you liked. This is going to be one of them. Like, I can't even... This is such a ridiculous fucking tweet that I can't... I, I'm not sure if he's trolling me or not. Like, I feel... I don't... Zach doesn't follow me. Um, and, and I feel like he's just coming at me. Carson Wentz to Deshaun Jackson. It's real. It was like a four-yard out pass. That's the shit that a lot of people get excited about. And they're like, oh my God, it's real. We got to blah, 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 blah. Whatever. Um, but this is my favorite time of the year, man. We're hearing a lot about injuries. We're hearing depth charts. We're hearing who's taking first team snaps. So we have a lot to talk about today. Um, one thing I want to bring up quickly is the whole Melvin Gordon saga. And I'm not worried about the Zeke holdout or anything, by the way. I, obviously, at 101, I wouldn't be concerned. He's got a lot of time left on his um, contract, so he doesn't really have much leverage. He has to report by August 6th in order to accrue, accrue a year towards free agency. So I'm assuming we will see him back. I think this is just a an attempt to let him know where his situation stands, knowing that they have to re-sign a lot of players. Um, so that being said, Melvin Gordon is the other one holding out. And I originally made my Melvin Gordon video talking about how I think both sides are getting things done. The reports out of camp don't sound good. The Chargers seem like they are holding pat on their money situation with Melvin Gordon. And Melvin Gordon is, I, I, I don't, I don't think he's looking to back down either. So unless one side says, fuck it, you know, we're just going to do what we got to do to get that guy on the field or Melvin's like, you know what, fuck it. I want to play football for five and a half million dollars. Um, it seems like this holdout is very, very real. He's going to have to play by like week eight in order to accrue a year towards free agency and become free agent next year. So we will see him by week eight, but, um, it honestly wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if Melvin Gordon ends up sitting out for a large portion of the season. So that being said, yes, Melvin Gordon has moved down my rankings pretty significantly. Um, and I try to make the rankings that if you were drafting today or if you're drafting tomorrow or whatever, I try to keep them as up to date as possible. So you will find that again in BigDogDraftGuide.com. Let's see where we're seeing some players go off the board here. Ezekiel Elliott, Christian McCaffrey, Kamara, Barkley, Kelsey at the 105. I don't hate that. It was Yannick, so obviously it's going to be a ridiculous pick. David Johnson, Devontae Adams, DeAndre Hopkins, Julio, Le'Veon Bell, Terry Kill, Odell, Melvin Gordon, Dalvin Cook, Joe Mixon, Juju Smith-Schuster, Michael Thomas. Now, I am at the turn down here, and uh, oh man, Nick Chubb, please fall to me. Do me a favor. I actually don't hate the turn, because I feel like there's a lot of value right here at the 2-10-3-1. Um, obviously, if you're in a 12-team league, a few guys that wouldn't normally drop to you will or that would normally drop to you might not get there. We're doing a 10-teamer today just because I have to get on a call in about 40 minutes, and I'm not sure I'd be able to wrap up a 12-teamer. 
So we saw Damian Williams go off the board. That's too early for me. If you're in a 10 team league, the 208, I think it just rides a little bit too much risk in my opinion. Mike Evans, I would have loved to get him to get him there. Now I have back to back picks. And for as much as I don't like James Conner, at the end of the second round, I'm very much okay with Conner there. And I really like Nick Chubb. I would take Chubb first here. I would probably take Chubb and then Marlon Mack, actually. But I don't know if I want to go with three wide receiver or three running backs to start off. So we're going to grab Nick Chubb. And then, again, like, guys, I don't hate players. I hate their ADPs. So if you're telling me I have to get Antonio Brown in the mid-second round, I'm going to be off him. If I can get him in the third round, I'm completely fine with that. So we started the draft off with Zeke, Nick Chubb, Antonio Brown. I would say Zeke and Chubb probably have the best odds on to lead the NFL in rushing yards this year. So I absolutely love that sack. I know a lot of people ask me if I'm concerned about Kareem Hunt coming back, you know, later on in the season. And like, yeah, maybe it's a little bit of a concern, but I'm not really about to worry about that because he's not back on the field till week 10. Um, He's already actually dealing with an injury, so he's not practicing or anything with his new team. And... With Chubb, it's just like, I expect him to absolutely dominate. He was so good last year. He was PFF's highest graded running back in his time as a starter. He put up ridiculous stats, and we saw the home run breakaway ability. So I'm assuming we're going to see a lot of the same things going into 2019. And if that's the case, by week 10, Nick Chubb is absolutely ripping up the league. I I 100% uh, expect him to have 900 or 1,000 yards from scrimmage by week 10. They're not just going to say, okay, you know what, let's switch up what's working for us and just bench Nick Chubb now. So I'm a huge believer in Nick Chubb. Antonio Brown, he's not a guy I'm targeting necessarily, but in the third round, I will absolutely take him. And I'm trying to divide the revenue because again, guys, I do a lot of these drafts, right? I'm always drafting on draft.com. So again, if you're a new user, you haven't signed up for draft.com or on the draft app, they have a fantastic app. Um, You can find it in the app store. Sign up, use promo code BDGE, throw $10 into your account, a new account. You'll be able to do 10 mock drafts before your actual draft starts, and you'll be set to go. You'll get the extra $3 on top of it, so there's an extra draft for you. Add me, Nick Ercolano, and we shall draft together. So technically, this isn't actually a mock draft. This is a best ball draft where the software automatically starts the best players at each position. No kicker, no defense. So you have one quarterback starting, two running backs. You can see the starting roster here, three wide receivers, and a tight end. So the strategy might be a little bit different, but the ADPs in terms of where players go off the board are nearly identical to what you'll see in in normal season-long drafts. So it starts the best players at each position each week. Um, There are three wide receivers as opposed to two. And if you guys play in a league where you start three wide receivers, obviously that boosts their value a little bit more. You might be looking to um, target a wide receiver early, maybe in the second round if you hadn't been looking to do that beforehand. Tight end and quarterback, you only start one guy. So you usually only need to draft one or two. Okay, so we had we had a fake report come out this morning about Leonard Fournette pulling his hamstring, and like everybody on Twitter believed it. Kind of pissed it didn't actually happen. But um, Demonta Freeman. So there was news that came out. You know, obviously I, I've been one of the guys most vocal about staying away from Demonta Freeman. All of this theoretical RB one upside is really, 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 really ridiculous. Um, and it was never there. The last time he played a full season, he was getting 16 and a half touches per game. I know Coleman is gone, but listen, and in my videos where I'm doing like the do not draft running backs, I talk about Quadri Allison a lot. The kid out of Pittsburgh, who's an absolute beast. And, uh, and now there was reports that Quadri Allison is probably going to be in the game on short yardage situations. It makes sense given that he's 228 pounds, but he also has really good speed for the size that he gives you. So if Devonta Freeman is the in-between the 20s grinder and Quadri Allison is getting a lot of the touchdowns or a lot of the short yardage work, that makes Freeman even less valuable, man. And uh, I really just can't get on board with Freeman anywhere inside the first three, even four rounds. I wouldn't even touch him in the fourth round, to be honest with you. So we're seeing carry on going off the board. Hilton, Diggs, AJ Green, Brandon Mm -hmm. Cooks, Julian Edelman. Okay, so this is an interesting little little thing right here. Um, We have two running backs already, wide receiver, See, Patrick Mahomes, this is not a spot that I hate taking him. In the fifth round, or, you know, I'll take him at the 5-1. It makes me feel a little bit more comfortable. I've been nailing Robert Woods at the end of the fourth in almost every single draft I'm in, so I will continue doing that. And uh, you know what? Fuck it. We're going to stack it with Patrick Mahomes. So, actually, a lot of of guys we could talk about right here. Robert Woods. So, Cooper Cup was actually... He avoided the pup list, which was a surprise to me because he tore his ACL late in the year. And most of the 
time I've been talking about Cooper Cup is to stay away from him, right? Stay away, stay away, because um, we like to target guys two years removed from ACL, not this year. And as soon as he was activated from the pup list, you know, I uh, I texted Dr. Jess, uh, Jesse Morse, and if you missed my injury video with him that went up on Wednesday, it was a really, really, really fucking good one. So I very much suggest that you go check that out. I asked him in the in 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 the DMs, slid in the DMs, and I was like, "Yo, the fuck, Doc? Cooper Cup's gonna be a savage this year, or what? Does this move him up your rankings or anything?" Um, he said, "No, not necessarily." Uh, he said, "I still need to see him." planting and moving and uh, being confident in the foot. He said it's just as much as of, a, of a mental game in your first year back and having confidence in your knee as it is a physical game. Uh, but obviously he's, he's moving in the right direction. Does that mean I'm going to be putting him back into the fifth round? No, but it's obviously good news for um, a guy like Cooper Cup. So it doesn't that just because a guy's on the pup list doesn't mean that he's injured. Or if a guy is not on the pup list, doesn't mean that he's fully healthy, guys. There's a lot of background stuff that you might not know um, going on behind the scenes. So <laughs> you have to monitor those kind of reports very, 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 very closely. Patrick Mahomes. Now, I, I'm working on the Big Dogs Gotta Eat Bible. And the Bible is this monster write-up I do every year for the draft guide. Again, you can cop that on bigdogsdraftguide.com where I go really, really in-depth. It's usually from like anywhere from 5,000 to 10,000 words going position by position on basically all of the trends and everything I see because I prep for, you know, I prep for fantasy football for months, right? I've been doing videos nonstop since like the beginning of April and I see a lot of trends. I see a lot of things happening and I have a good sense of what your strategy should be going into 2019. And that's basically, I put all of that into a, an article that I call the Big Dogs Gotta Eat Bible. And I'm in the midst of writing the quarterback section. I go position by position. And I think like late round quarterback has gotten to the point where it's being faded so much that it's almost a value, right? And I tweeted this out earlier this morning. Let me find the tweet because what I did was look at the last like five years of data and I wanted to see, you know, where the, the number one quarterback was being drafted and where like the two, three, four was. And because we're seeing quarterbacks go so late this year that I'm like, okay, this is what I said. I understand the math behind the late round quarterback strategy, but at what point are people taking it too far? On average, over the last five seasons, the quarterback two, in terms of draft in fantasy, has been picked at spot 32. Quarterback three was 44th off the board. Quarterback four was 56th off the board. Right now, right, Luck, Rodgers, and Watson are the Q, are, are the quarterbacks two through four. They're going picked at 60, 65, and 72. So as you can see, they're being p pushed back 30, 25, 20 spots. So yes, like we do want to do late round quarterbacks. Because the math adds up and the positional value in terms of like fantasy points scored per game are, are not that high. It's getting to the point where those guys, right, the, the Watsons, the Rogerses, the Andrew Lux are falling that I want them. Like I will be targeting and I followed up with the next tweet. I said, I don't play in one quarterback leagues anymore because all of my leagues are super flex. But if I did, like I would be using my sixth or seventh round pick every single time on one of these elite quarterbacks. I know you think you can get cute and get all these targets late, um, but like this right here, uh, we have Watson, Luck, and Rogers. So I have my pick of which one I want. And since I'm on the turn and I won't be able to get one of those three at the next turn, I'm going to grab one of them right now. And I, you know, it's even more enticing in best ball, and I'll explain why in a second. This Cooper Cup is still on the board. That's interesting. I'm surprised with the news people wouldn't uh, target him. I actually love Tyler Boyd. I need to, I need to get me some Tyler Boyd. So what we're going to do, we're going to grab my quarterback. And uh, I kind of like getting one of, one of these more stable guys. Not that Watson's not stable, but he is an injury risk in my opinion. Anyone that's a little more mobile um, obviously comes with greater risk of being hit. So we will go with, wait, wasn't Tyler, oh, Tyler Boyd, who just got that four-year, 40-plus million dollar extension. We knew that they were going to extend Tyler Boyd and not A.J. Green. I will call it now, and y'all can come back and yell at me if you want afterwards. If the Cincinnati Bengals offense goes downhill quickly, I think A.J. Green very well might be traded this season, midseason. I think he's a midseason trade target, not for fantasy, for real NFL teams. Patriots, someone like that. Um, the thing about, okay, so for best ball, again, guys, if you're new, if, if you're new to the channel, welcome, first of all. Um, if you're new to best ball, you don't make sit-start decisions. The software, like I said, automatically starts the best 
the best two running backs, the best three wide receivers. So it kind of favors, uh, like I said, the ADP doesn't really shift that much. You're still drafting the best guys in, in the earlier slots and things like that. What it does is it might move up a guy like Robbie Anderson or Deshaun Jackson, guys that you don't necessarily have to decide when to sit or start. They might be a little more boom bust, but since you don't have to decide, that makes them a lot more valuable. So um, that's kind of the gist when it comes to best ball. However, you do only start one quarterback, but oh, I fuck, I totally forgot I took Patrick Mahomes. Now I sound like an idiot, but this the same thing kind of holds steady. I have Rodgers and Mahomes. Um, with a one quarterback league in best ball, the reason that you fade quarterback in, in, in one season leagues, in one quarterback seasonal seasonal leagues, is because if it doesn't work out, you could find someone off the waiver wire. You make no in season moves in best ball. You don't hit the waiver wire. You can't make trades. You don't do sit-start decisions. It's all in the draft. And that's why I like this, because drafting is probably the funnest part about fantasy football, right? So if you like doing that, that's why you should get on draft.com. So with these leagues that are one quarterback and seasonal, right, you could scoop someone off the wire if you're, if your quarterback that you drafted busted. Here, you don't have that option. Yes, it will start whatever the best quarterback is, but you want to have one of those steady guys up top. If you're getting an elite quarterback in the seventh round, I will smash that cop button all day so you don't have to worry about that position. You know what I mean? There's no value getting someone off the waiver wire. It's not po possible. Um, so we have Mahomes and Rodgers. I'm an idiot. I usually don't pay attention to these mock drafts because I'm always talking to you guys nonstop. So I don't really look at my team for the most part, which is really not something I suggest you guys doing. Um, but let's see what's going on here. So what other news do we got? Oh, we got Edelman with a broken thumb. So this is interesting, man. Uh, Edelman ap apparently suffered the injury a few weeks ago and the optimal return timetable per, uh, injury. I forget what Twitter account it was said it's seven weeks. That's fine. I li this literally has no fucking impact on Edelman. What it does confirm though, it, it, what it reminds you is that Edelman has always kind of been an injury prone player. So it, he'll be back by week one. He'll be fine for the regular season. But it's just something that you have to remember when you're drafting Edelman. I know people love Edelman coming off of last year, and you should because he was such a big piece of that offense. So productive, huge Super Bowl MVP, right? But but if you're starting to look in like the third round, he's a guy that carries a lot of injury risk with him. And I think this was a reminder. What I think it does gets him off the field. And I've talked about Nikhil Harry, right? And you might think about Nikhil Harry being this um monster target ooh ooh i see two running backs that i would love to snag here actually i see four running backs that i would love to snag here ah, i probably need a tight end too fuck it we're going to fade the tight end position um okay vance was the only guy i was actually looking at and he just went so i'm going to decide i don't have enough i don't have like any Daryl henderson stocks because he was stonks he was getting picked in like the 5th and 6th round for a lot of drafts, which is ridiculous. I would never even think about him there. But in the eighth, ninth round, I love the Savius Murray, so we're going to go with Murray. The other guy I'm thinking of, I, I, I mean, I like all three of these guys. Eckler, Miles Sanders, Royce Freeman. I have a lot of Freeman stocks. Stonks. We're using stonks from now on instead of stocks. But like I said, if I'm fading Melvin Gordon, <clears throat> and I think the holdout is very, very realistic possibility, I'm going to go with Eckler. I've talked a lot about Eckler. I made an entire video on the whole Melvin Gordon thing. So if you want to learn my, my, my takes on, you know, Eckler versus Justin Jackson, you can go find that video on my channel. Just search Melvin Gordon. There's a lot of running back value here still left on the board. So that solidifies me with four running backs, probably start hammering the wide receivers. One thing I always try to intentionally do is stack a quarterback with his, uh, at least it's wide receiver one or it's wide receiver two. In this case, um, can't really do the tight ends because I have Patrick Mahomes and Kelsey's already off the board. But stacking, we already dove into it. My guy, Stephen Mullen, who is uh, writing best ball articles for the Big Dogs Fantasy website, which you can go find on BigDogsFantasy.com. Head over to articles. He does one best ball article write up each week. And this one is best ball deep dive ownership percentage. Um, so that's something you can go read up on. He'll be putting them out. I believe it's every Monday. You can go follow him on Twitter, Stephen Mullen at SR Mullen 1979. So he does a lot of best ball breakdowns for me. And, uh, one thing he found was that stacking always gives you a higher win percentage. So what I intentionally do is I find my quarterbacks 
and I don't really know what my stacking situation is going to be like. I might not even be able to stack them because I have Rodgers and I have Mahomes. Obviously, Tyreek Hill's off the board. Watkins is off the board. MVS just went. So if Geronimo Allison falls to me, yeah, I'll grab him, obviously. And you guys know I'm pro MVS over Geronimo Allison. I just think the outside wide receiver typically wins in an Aaron Rodgers offense. And um, if I can get Allison, yeah, I'll be happy to do so. But I'm not sure if he's going to fall to me. So I just want to give you that little bit of a uh, piece of information that stacking gives you a little bit of an edge in terms of winning percentage because he exported all of the teams last year and their winning percentages and found that, you know, there's like a two to three percent increase in winning percentage for guys that um, stack their quarterback with a wide receiver one, a two or a tight end. So what I sneaky could do is grab Jimmy Graham. Graham. If you watched yesterday's Fade the Public episode, we talked about some tight ends that were draft day values. And I actually said Jimmy Graham because he's going off the board around tight end 15 or 16. I don't like Jimmy Graham. I fucking hated him last year. But on a raw statistical basis, it wasn't terrible. 55 catches, 636 yards, two touchdowns. The only thing that was missing was the touchdowns. And Aaron Rodgers only threw 25, whereas his normal touchdown rate is around 6 to 6.5% in terms of his percentage of throws that go for touchdowns. It was a career low. So we can expect that to bounce back. He will be at a much higher touchdown rate, which I think Jimmy Graham will, you know, in inevitably just boost up to, even if it's five touchdowns, 600 yards, five touchdowns at the tight end position, if you're going to completely fade it, is not that bad. So I don't hate uh, a Jimmy Graham, some Jimmy Graham action here later. I probably wouldn't have to take him until round, you know, 15 or so. So I'm cool with that. And uh, I typically end up going with like seven wide receivers on my roster. I don't have to touch the quarterback position again, obviously, because I have two elite options. All right, we're like three picks away. Give me that Allison stack, baby. Two picks. Man, I love a lot of the wide receivers on the board here. QT, ah, snipe. Don't snipe me with Allison, you mother. Design, don't done it on me. I'm trying to have a good weekend. It's Friday. Life is going pretty well right now. You know, don't have a lot of anxiety. I'm about to have some anxiety after I drink this monster. Hey, my guy left me Geronimo Allison. So we got that Rodgers Allison stack. I'm shocked that he fell to me at the end of the 10th round. Now MBS is going early ninth round. And I would like to grab another wide receiver here, unless there's a value on the board at tight end. No, I'm good there. Sutton, Fitz, Tate, Moncrief, Nikhil Harry. Uh, you know, we're talking about Nikhil Harry, and I didn't finish what I was saying. So with Edelman out, what this does for Nikhil Harry, in my opinion is it's going to get him reps in the Julian Edelman position. Harry is a big-bodied beast. And let's, let's bring up his player profile. Nikhil Harry is my 101 in Dynasty. You can see all my Dynasty rankings and my season-long rankings at BigDogsDraftGuide.com. Nikhil Harry is an animal. 6'2", 228. Runs a 4'5", 340, which puts him in the uh, 91st percentile for speed sport. What I love most about Nikhil Harry, though, is his playmaking ability with the ball in his hands. He moves like a slot receiver. They set up so many screen plays, behind the line of scrimmage plays, slants that he took to the house while he was in college. He plays like Julian Edelman at a monster receiver size. So I was already thinking prior to the Julian Edelman injury that we were going to see a lot of design plays for Harry. And now what this does is give him the opportunity in camp to take over that position and train as if he's in that position already. So I think we're going to see Nikhil Harry, like this makes me a lot higher on Nikhil Harry because he's going to get these practice reps now and they're going to see what he could do um, in practice. And trust me, there's going to be a lot of beat reports coming out about how good Nikhil Harry looks and we're going to see his ADP shoot up. So I'm starting to grab him in a lot of 10th, 11th rounders uh, because I think he'll be, you know, he's not just a deep threat or a red zone threat given his size. I think he's going to be a really good option PPR wise. And, uh, I think there's a good chance that he is the number two target overall, maybe the number three behind James White in this offense. And I'll take that for an offense that runs a very, very, very high number of plays year in and year out. You got it, I'm saying? All right, so we got five wide receivers. Let's look at the squad so far. That was so dumb of me taking fucking Mahomes and Aaron Rodgers together. I can't believe I didn't notice that. Dude, I love this team. This team is absolutely phenomenal. If I don't win this league, y'all are going to all Venmo me money. 
If every one of you guys that watches watches this Venmo's me a dollar, my Venmo name is at Nicker Colano. I could buy I could buy a lot of cool things for the HQ. So let's do that. Everyone Venmo me a dollar. Also hit the thumbs up button. If you're enjoying the video, guys, it helps me out a lot. It lets me know that you appreciate these videos. Obviously, I put a lot of time and work and research into backing up my points of view and bringing y'all the big facts only. So uh, if you just hit that thumbs up button, it lets me know that you do appreciate the work I put in. So scroll down a little bit, hit it. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. We are putting out videos five days a week. Um, Bi-weekly, we do a private live stream in which I answer all your questions, which will take place tomorrow. I do them every other Saturday throughout the summer. And then in season, they will be every single week. And I will be helping you to you know answer your sit start questions, your trade questions, your draft questions, but it's only for Patreon members. So head over to patreon.com slash BDGE. You'll be able to sign up for that private subscription. So five videos a week. Every Friday is a mock draft. So make sure you add me on draft. Nick Ercolano. Use promo code BDGE when you sign up if you're a newcomer and, uh, and shit will slap. Okay. So we got Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers, the quarterback, Zeke, Nick Chubb, Latavius Murray, Austin Eckler at running back, Antonio Brown, Robert Woods, Tyler Boyd, Geronimo Allison, Nikhil, Harry. Wow, we went heavy on the slot receivers. Love it. Um, but that's a really strong team. But it goes without having a tight end. Now, what do you do if you fade the tight end position? This is an interesting one. Uh, I'm going to get someone that gives me a floor here that I know is going to go, you know, three for 40 or something each week, which will probably be a Trey Burton. I, you, you all know I don't like Trey Burton whatsoever, but um, I'm going to go with him and I'm probably going to go with, hmm, do I want to go with Trey Burton or do I want to go with Jimmy Graham? If I believe that Aaron Rodgers is going to go throw for 35 to 40 touchdowns this year, I should probably go with Jimmy Graham because both him and Allison could end up, you know, scoring between five and eight touchdowns. Great pick with Peyton Barber there in the end of the 12th round. He should be going before Ronald Jones. I don't know why people insist that Ronald Jones is the guy there when the reports literally keep coming out that Peyton Barber is the starter. He's going to have a three down roll. It's his job to lose. But nope, let's just fucking pretend that those don't exist and keep drafting Ronald Jones in the ninth round. So we're going to go with a double stack of tight ends here. The first guy I'm going to grab is Dallas Goddard. Now, Dallas Goddard, Dallas Goddard, his floor admittedly is very low. He could have multiple games where he doesn't catch a single ball. His ceiling, though, is that of a... Actually, I'm going to wait on tight end because I can grab Hawkinson or Jimmy Graham probably next time around. His ceiling, though, is that of a, a league winner in best ball. Wide receivers, who do we like? Who do we like? Who do we like? Uh, I like Anthony Miller. I like Anthony Miller. My hype for him going into last year was unreal. Um, and then he separated his shoulder in like week two and basically played with one shoulder for the remainder of the year. I think he's as talented as anyone that came out of college last year in that draft. But he dealt with Mitch Trubisky. He dealt with having to beat out Taylor Gabriel, which is ridiculous. He dealt with his shoulder injury. I think Anthony Miller is a sneaky play to have a, a, a very good year in PPR leagues in 2018 he's always had a knack for the end zone too and that i mean we saw that when he scored seven touchdowns in his rookie year um which was normally would like tie for the league lead for rookies but we had you know calvin ridley who went off but anthony miller is a touchdown scorer that was like one of my big talking points there's some guys you know you can't you can't predict touchdowns necessarily and it's weird. It's a coincidence that all of the guys that when I say like they have a knack for the end zone, you know, it, it's volatile and you can't predict touchdowns. Right. But some guys like just do it year in and year out. And we saw it with Anthony Miller in college. He's just the guy that scores. He's got that like intangible. And for some reason, all of the guys that I feel like have a knack for the end zone that are just guys that are going to get in the end zone year in and year out are smaller guys. It's Anthony Miller. It's Antonio Brown. It's Stefan Diggs. It's like these guys are just so crisp with their routes. So when the defense gets tight in the red zone or inside the 10 zone, you need to be able to separate using your routes, right? If you're smaller, you can't jump over guys. So you need to be able to develop that quick foot speed to get you separation. And uh, these guys just learn. It, it's like survival of the fittest. It's fucking Darwinism out here. It's Anthony Darwin Miller out in this bitch. He survived by learning how to separate in really tight zones. And those guys score touchdowns regardless of how many overall targets they get. And I think Miller is that guy again. I think he will continue to do that. Um, another interesting, another interesting uh, note that came out today from 
the Twitter world was that Kalen Balaj took the first snap with the first team. Um, let me find where the blurb was. Doesn't really matter. Either way, Kalen Balaj took the first snap with the Miami offense. Am I looking into this? Not really. Do I think Kalen Balaj is going to be the starter there? I mean, he could be the starter in the same sense that like Frank Gore was the starter last year, but it was a complete time split. What I think it does is tell you that it's not Kenyon Drake's workhorse job. We've been saying this all summer, y'all. It wasn't just a product of Adam Gase. Kenyon Drake is a, Kenyon Drake is exactly who Kenyon Drake is. We saw it in college, and we have a fucking 19-year sample size in the NFL. He's not a workhorse, and he won't be a workhorse. So stop drafting him in the fourth round. He's in a committee that we don't even know if he's going to get goal line work in one of the worst offenses in the NFL. There is so many red flags with Drake in the fourth round. In the sixth round, sure, I like Drake as a PPR option, an inconsistent PPR option. In the fourth round, no. There's no. Stop. Stock. S-T-O-C. Stock. All right. All right. So, again, we, don't, we never have to really look at quarterbacks again uh, because we have two solidified ones. And most of the time I end up with... Um, Two quarterbacks, two tight ends, but since I faded tight end completely, I'll probably end up with three tight ends on my roster. Because again, guys, things happen all the time. Injuries, bye weeks, you need to make sure that you have someone in the lineup at all times. Because if you're taking zeros in one of these positions, that's basically an auto L in these leagues. And the way this works is the top three scoring teams end up winning, depending on the buy-ins, right? So you could choose between... Uh, let me make my picks real quick. Uh, I was hoping Hawkinson fell to me. Okay, so I can I can do something like a Burton Jimmy Graham stack right here, which I might do. Chris Herndon went off the board with a four game suspension already, huh? Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna get a couple unexciting guys, Trey Burton, Jimmy Graham, which gives me a week over week floor. At least it's better than zeros. And if something happens to Ertz, Goddard gives me league winning upside in best ball or any any league really. Um, I'm probably not gonna gr- I'm probably not gonna draft him in season long leagues. Maybe in like the last round, but I'm not really looking at handcuff tight ends, obviously. Um, so there we go. We shorted up the tight end position. Now it's all wide receivers and running backs. This is an 18 round draft. So we will have our 16th, 17th. We have three more picks left divided up. However, I want to between the skill positions. I'm trying to remember what I was saying right before we started talking about tight ends. Can anyone remind me? Oh, that's right. I filmed this a day before. So now you guys are actually fucking listening to me. Zam. So uh, I think I was talking about Balaj. I think I was talking about Kenyon Drake. I think I was really not making any sense, if we're being honest. Um, what else do we got going on, y'all? Ryquel Armstead activated from the pup list. He was dealing with a hamstring injury. Um, he is the backup to Leonard Fournette. So he's not someone I'm really high on because he also has a floor of absolutely zero, you know. And, uh, oh, best ball. I think that's what I was talking about. 18 man rosters. And on the draft app, you know, you can join leagues anywhere from a dollar up to, I believe they have four figure buy in. So $1,000, $2,000. So you can kind of choose your price. And I believe you can create free drafts. So in essence, this is actually not a mock draft. This is a $1 draft. Oh, great pick there on Matt Breida in the 15th. In essence, this is a $1 draft. But you win prizes if you win. So I believe, you know, between 10 people, it'd be $10 prize pool. First place probably gets $5. Second place, $3. Um, third place, a dollar, And I think they take a rake of 10%. So, you know, if you want to practice, like you'll get serious draft results. That's the problem with drafting on Yahoo or ESPN. It's one, their ADPs and their rankings are fucking miserable too. It's it, obviously it's free. So you're not going to get realistic drafts. Yeah, they don't. They're. It's not really customizable in terms of scoring settings. So everyone's going to be drafting based on their own scoring. Like if you're in a super flex league, you're probably going to join a mock draft on ESPN and start drafting as if, you know, you're in a super flex league. And quarterbacks go off the board. People start. People leave most of the drafts by the time it's like the fifth or sixth round. You got like four guys left in there. You got kickers going off the board. You got defenses going off the board. This eliminates all that nonsense. This gives you the most realistic point of view on how an actual draft will go on draft day. So I could not be more enthusiastic about this partnership that I have with draft, but I was using their platform far, far, far before we, um, actually, you know, inked some shit before we signed that Tyler Boyd contract, 
your man's was using draft and making videos on draft, but this is the number one platform if you're going to prepare. So throw $10 into your account and you can do 10 drafts before your actual draft and you will feel really, really, really good. You'll be able to pick up on all the trends that are happening and where guys are going and where you should start targeting um, certain guys. So throw $10 in, use promo code BDGE, add me, Nick Ercolano, and we shall draft together. Together, forever, I'm meant to be together. It's good to see Kareem Hunt. It's finally going in like the fucking 200th pick. I'll grab Kalen Balaj if he falls to me here. I'm not someone who just falls for one little fucking blurb, but I kind of always, we always knew, well, I always thought that Kenyon Drake was going to be in a timeshare. And it's going to be, like, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if Kalen Balaj got 10 plus carries a game in that, in that Frank Gore role, given his size. Kalen Balaj is a fantastic pass. It, it's, it's funny because he's built like, I was about to say Kalen Baggage. It's pretty much all he fucking brings to the field is baggage, but... Um, Keelan Balaj is built like Adrian Peterson. If you see him, like, I, I'm not, I'm not going to necessarily tell you to go Google Keelan Balaj shirtless on Google, but you might be doing yourself a favor. You look at him, oh, I just got totally sniped by Yannick. First time that word has ever came out of my, my mouth was Yannick. Finally, Yannick, a good pick, bro. Finally, in your first, first time in your 1,000 picks that you've done in front of me is the first good pick you made. I'm about to grab Andy Isabella, though. About to grab Isabella Doe? Fall to me. The way I look at Andy is Isabella is, you know, he's starting in three wide receiver sets. That's, I mean, that's at least all of the reports that are coming out of Arizona. This is a team that's going to run a lot of snaps. This is a team that, one, will run 95% of their plays with at least three wide receivers on the field. So Isabella's going to be a full-time player. That's one. Two, this is a team that's going to run a lot of plays. Their offensive tempo is going to be like, this is a team that's going to run a high percentage of pass plays. So just by doing the simple math, I think we can pretty much figure out that Andy Isabella is going to be one of the highest volume rookie wide receivers in terms of routes run. So by default, he'll probably be one of the most productive rookie wide receivers. So down here, I like grabbing Andy Isabella. Now we have seven wide receivers and, and four running backs. And the reason I've been going really heavy on wide receivers is because we stacked up our running backs early, right? Between Zeke and Chubb. So we don't need as much depth because we have so much scoring from the top end guys. Now is when we start looking at depth. Devin Singletary, I like him to come on the second half of the year, but I want points every single week from a guy in best ball. So he's more of a season long pickup or something. Uh, Chase Edmonds, Duke Johnson. I like the idea of Duke Johnson possibly getting traded. So I'm going to go with Duke Johnson here because I think he has really nice upside and he might play some pass catching role while Kareem Hunt is out. Um, so I forget what I was saying. So about Andy Isabella is like, yeah, I think by default, he's going to be a very high volume route runner. And then that offense with Kyler Murray, I mean, he's going to have his games, man. Andy Isabella is a sneaky bet to produce the most receiving statistics, if you want to say, out of the uh, out of the incoming wide receiver rookies. So I am on board with uh, I'm on board with Andy Isabella as a late round pick, especially in best ball. So it's probably going to be Christian Kirk, Larry Fitz and Andy Isabella. And I usually take out I almost every one of my drafts ends up with one of those three wide receivers on my roster. And unfortunately, it's becoming less and less Christian Kirk because the hype is getting so high that now he's like an end of the fifth, early sixth round pick. And I'm just like, Listen, guys, just because you like a player doesn't mean you can ignore the downside. Still a lot of good wide receivers in that offense. There's still a chance that this offense just doesn't fucking work at all. This defense, the offensive line is horrible. This defense is, is going to be bad, which means they're going to be staying on the field a long time, which means maybe, you know, if the offense goes three and out a lot, that's, that, there you go. That's a lot of time off the clock between them not having the ball and then their defense being on the field for a long time. If that makes sense. So we're in the 17th round. Oh, Malcolm Brown's still there, huh? 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 I can't believe that people are really taking Darrell Henderson like the fifth round. Kind of fucking out of control. So I'm getting on a call to possibly move my podcast platform. Uh, possibly move my podcast platform. If any of you guys are 
fellow content creators, fellow podcasters. Um, I'm interested to hear where you have your podcast hosted. I currently get mine host, have mine hosted on buzzsprout.com and it's fantastic because you literally just upload the audio and it automatically shoots out to Apple, iTunes, you know, Spotify, Stitcher, Alexa. So it takes out all the work I need to do, but the more content you put out weekly, like the more hours of audio that you upload, the more expensive it gets. You hit like a threshold of X number of hours and then for every extra hour that you upload, it's, I think it's like two, two or $3. So since we're putting out five videos a week, that's, you know, a minimum of like 18 to 20 hours a week, which is starting to cost me a little, little bit of money. So this other company, I believe it's called Red Circle, I'm about to give them a little bit of a shout out, says they can do the same thing for me and will not charge me for hosting my podcast. So I will keep you all updated on how that hosting goes. Um, and yeah, that's the call I'm about to get on right after we finish this. So we are in the last round. Sam Darnold in the 18th, love that. Darwin Thompson, I don't love that because he's just as likely to have a zero in every single week as he is to really do anything. AJ Brown, I low key like. Albert Wilson, I know there's a lot of hype around Wilson, but he had like a very serious injury and he's like barely practiced at all. So I think it's really, I think it's a really big reach to expect anything out of Albert Wilson within like the first two months of the season. So I'm not necessarily targeting him. It's like, I like the idea of him being a popular waiver wire pickup maybe in the second half of the year. Sort of like I was talking about with Devin Singletary. Um, I think he's got a lot of work cut out for him. God damn it, Yannick. You should go fucking play the lottery. This is the luckiest you've ever gotten, making two good picks in one draft. I'm upset. I'm upset. I might go with eight wide receivers, to be honest. Oh, Muhammad Sanu. He's my target. Oh, we didn't talk about Calvin Ridley. The Ridemeister. Yeah, I know it's fucking Calvin Ridley. Don't, don't waste your breath commenting on it. Calvin Ridley pulled up with a hamstring injury today at training camp. I'm filming this on Thursday. So if something happens within the next 12 hours, I'm sorry I didn't fucking upload two seconds before it happened. Calvin Ridley, I actually want to look at my ownership percentage when it comes to Muhammad Sanu because I feel like I low-key been drafting him in a lot of drafts. People are so high on Ridley that they kind of just forget that Sanu has a nice floor in this offense. And uh, where are you? I'm going to find the ownership percentages because it's easier on the app. But you can look at ownership percentages on the app or on the website. Uh, and if you're interested in knowing how, I will show y'all or I'll let, you know, leave a comment and I'll let you know. Where is Muhammad Sanu? Okay, so maybe I don't have that much of him. I felt like I drafted him a lot. I own him in 5% of leagues. I'm full of shit. But he is someone that I will be targeting in the last round of a lot of drafts. So... Calvin Ridley goes down with a hamstring injury. And we know from Dr. Jesse Morse, we know from this Wednesday's video, that hamstring injuries need three to four weeks, maybe more to heal. Mohamed Sanu pulled the hamstring. There were reports that came out. And then they were saying he tried to push it. He tried to get back on the field and continue playing. That is the worst thing you could do for a hamstring injury because these things linger. That tells me a few things. That Calvin Ridley is going to try to push himself earlier than he needs to push himself. If he got back on the next play, what do you think he's going to do in two weeks when that hamstring feels 85%? He's going to say, I'm ready to play, even though he's not. If you get back on there, on the field, when the hamstring is 85%, that's going to cause trouble. That's going to cause a re-injury to the hamstring or an injury elsewhere for another body part that is compensating for the less than 100% hamstring. So, I'm nervous about Ridley. It's it's a lot of time before the season starts, but he needs to rest it properly. He needs to sit for the next three to four weeks, then maybe play in their week three preseason game, week four preseason game, and I will feel good about Ridley again. But I'm nervous. I, I would be lying to you if I wasn't. And if Ridley misses time, Muhammad Sanu is the default wide receiver two in an offense that projects to be very high paced. Tons of passing with Dirk Cutter coming in there. So... Muhammad Sanu, y'all, if you're in best ball draft, 17th, 18th round, Muhammad Sanu needs to be your target. Target, 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 target. He has a higher floor than basically any single player that you can get within the last three, probably four rounds. Muhammad Sanu, target his ass. Nick Ercolano, best channel. Subscribe if you are new. Head over to draft.com. Use promo code BDGE for $3 to draft with. Add me, Nick Ercolano, and I will invite you to all the drafts that I start up throughout the week. Hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed. And, uh, and that's it for today. So I love y'all. Thank you for sticking around. And I'll see you on tomorrow's live stream, patreon.com slash BDGE. We out. Have a good weekend. Mwah.